just wanted to uh, make a little update of what I did and especially how 2021 ended and how 2022 started. <laughs> I finished my no frills cardigan I had so many patterns in my mind that I would that I would love to knit but I couldn't make a, sh a choice and then December came um, festive time came and I was so paralyzed by the fact that I needed to choose a new pattern that I just didn't choose anything I decided to do something that was on my mind for so long that I thought it was very, it was time to to dive in frogging and I started to frog a hat. It was a yellow one that was way too loose and large for my head. It was very useless against the cold. Then I frogged the first version of the Papus pullover I made, which was a big fail because um, it was way too big. It grew a lot and it was really not wearable for me. And then the last thing I frogged was my Georgetown cardigan, which I wasn't wearing anymore. So I decided it was time to make something new out of this yarn. It was the Arbor yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. I have all this yarn to use for um, other projects, but for the cardigan, for the yarn that I got for my previous cardigan, the Georgetown, the Georgetown cardigan, I already know what I'm gonna do with it. But for the pappus and the hat, I'm just uh, stashing them away and wait for the inspiration to strike. And then um, I didn't know what to do with my hands. And I also crocheted a little bit some hats for a charity hosted by my kids school. And then December was already over. And at the very end of December, one of my dear friends came to me asking if I could knit her a sweater from a um, commercial brand. And. Uh, that was the moment I realized that, yes, that could be it. That could be the project I could do because as I couldn't choose a project, a pattern for me, why not knitting for a dear friend, a very knit-worthy friend? So I said, yes, I can. I can replicate this sweater. I just have to find a pattern that is very similar to it. To eat and uh, I found one which is a pattern that I already knitted for me which is the boxcar sweater the construction is pretty much the same the only thing is it is a bottom-up sweater so for the, the hem I couldn't figure out a way to replicate this edge so what I did is I watched a few videos on YouTube and find a tutorial that could mimic this shape of shells. And I wasn't very happy with how it looked, so I just put a lifeline to make sure that I could rip it all and 
make it again but from the top down with short rows i think it, it will be a lot easier for me and uh, so yeah i did that and then started to knit the body i used um, the fisherman half fisherman ribs pattern a stitch sorry for this which looks very similar to the stitch pat uh, yes the stitch uses by used by uh, the storeboat sweater and yeah as I already did the boxcar sweater before there were no difficult parts for me to understand or follow and I must say that as Soprano Nitz, which is the designer of the boxcar, boxcar sweater, uh, did a wonderful job at uh, writing her patterns or, or the layout. Everything is clear. There are specific paragraphs for your specific sizes, and it's really easy to read and walk and look through the patterns. I really, really recommend you this pattern. So now I am, I finished the body, I separate, separated from the sleeves and the only thing, the tricky thing when I separated this for the sleeves is that I wasn't sure how to knit flat without disrupting the stitches pattern and um, I did something wrong, I get, I I assume that I did something wrong. You can see a little difference between um, the part where I knitted in the round and the part that I started to knit flat. So hopefully it will look good when it will after it will be blocked. I did the front part and the back part. I joined, the I joined the shoulders with the three needle bind off. I blocked it so I know how it will, how the yarn will react uh, because I know that alpaca is a yarn that grows and it can grow a lot. So I wanted to make sure it wouldn't grow too much in length and uh, it will be not too long because she's tall and she wanted her sweater to be long enough but i guess not too long this is it for this sweater hopefully it will be done um maybe not very soon i don't think so because yeah hopefully everything will win will go smoothly and uh, the final product will be as lovely as possible and especially it will look as similar as possible as the sweater that she wanted she wanted in the first place it is the first time that i need a sweater for someone else than me it's a bit um stressful but at the same time when you know that it is a very knitworthy person i really 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 enjoy knitting for her so everything everything is good and um yeah i will see you later for another update
I did it. The sweater has been washed, it has been blocked, and I gave it to its recipient. We were able to meet only twice. The first time she came, she, I took some measurements and she chose the yarn. She wanted to have a yellow sweater, even though she doesn't usually wear yellow. She's more kind of a blue color girl. And finding uh, some yellow yarn online is a bit tricky, as you may know, because it is kind of difficult to be sure that what you will get in real life will be the same as what you see on your screen. So, and she wanted the yellow to be not too, something in between dark, not too dark or too light or too neon, you know? It has to be just the perfect yellow. Then I remember that I had some alpaca silk by drops in my stash and I showed her and she, she liked it. It was the right yellow. So she placed an order right away. The second time we met, she tried the sweater. The body was a little bit too short for her liking and I needed to need a few centimeters more on the sleeves. She is really taller than I thought. Also, um, the ease around the back was a little bit too tight, preventing her from moving her arms really easily. To be honest, I was a little bit nervous about the fit and even more nervous after, um, after this uh, fit checking because it wasn't really like she wanted it to be. Plus, I only had one ball left, a little bit less than one ball to complete the sweater. So I was really afraid of not having enough. And the yarn chicken game started. But I pushed through. I decided to cut off the bottom edge that I did at the beginning of the sweater just below the lifeline that I added. And I started to knit the ribbings right away, uh, long enough to make sure that the body will be long enough for her. And I used short row methods to create the scalloped edge shape. Against all odds, I was able to complete uh, the body and the sleeves and even the neckband with all the yarn I had left, including um, my swatch. A little out of the blue, I decided to bring her her sweater in person. We agreed to meet at Le Jardin des Plantes in Paris and we spent a lovely morning together. sweater was like a dream. I was so 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 relieved because the fit was perfect. And then came this feeling of deep happiness and enchantment. I didn't expect to be so in love with, with the result and she also really loved it as you can tell. The sense of accomplishment that I feel right now fills my heart with pride and joy. She is so knit worthy and I told her that I would definitely be happy to knit her another garment anytime she wants. I will leave you there with some footage of her enjoying her sweater. 
Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in another video. Bye.